y'all all sounded like little chipmunks, but robotic and like scratchy, and like that's all it was. It's just. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I thought, it, and then Jaime had a goofy smile on his face. It was messed up. And then Jaime had a goofy smile on his face. So I was like, wait, did he just change his audio to mess with me? <laughs> that was strange. Maybe that's how we've always sounded. No, it was worse than that. I was like, because <laughs> it, 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 I couldn't make out any chipmunk. words. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's Robotic a- dying well, chipmunk. That's Alvin and the Demented Chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin and the Dementors. Hello, friends. My name is David White, and you're listening to the Mist Conceptions Podcast. We're, we're flying through the air, and I'm staring off kind of just aimlessly. I'm just looking straight forward because in my mind, I'm seeing more than what I'm seeing in front of me. Um, and I just keep seeing Jesse's lifeless dead body. I keep seeing um, the Beastmen getting just decimated and captured, and it is just like replaying on a loop in my head. Um, and I can hear maybe a faint tribal drum beats in the back of my mind as I just see these things looping and looping and getting more twisted and deformed and taking on um, shadows and dancing and almost like almost like mocking me and tormenting me. And I think that I think that's the intro. Previously on Misconceptions. Uh, the crew had kidnapped Pip Hamill, found out that he was the gingerbread man, uh, and as they were thinking about what do we need to do with this information, how do we not implicate ourselves in his abduction, uh, Faye went to work as Leslie Williams and found that Pip Hamill was alive and well, or a version of Pip Hamill was alive and well, and she was uh, recognized by Deacon, and that led to some altercations inside City Hall. Meanwhile, on the island, uh, the crew was invaded by some sort of paramilitary force with uh, both beast men and regular men and women in the uh, their ranks, and they were kidnapping beast men, uh, and the crew had to abandon yet another hideout in order to uh, survive. And uh, Faye also had to flee, abandoning her Leslie Williams identity. And uh, as they fled, not really knowing where they were going next, um, I think that's where this episode starts. So where do we where do we start this episode? Who do we start with? Do we start with Faye, uh, or do we start with the crew where they are? We start with the crew. Sure. I feel like the crew would want to know if I, I guess I could sh- I should probably do this narratively if we're starting with the crew, huh? Go ahead. All right. Uh hey guys, uh if if they knew um where we were, could that mean that they know who Faye is? I don't think those two things necessarily go together. How would they even know where we were? But we've had contact yeah, but, I mean, how how would they have known that we were on the island? I mean, like, sure, Dr. Jacoby was on the island, but, I mean, they... Was there not some kind of tracking on Pip? Yeah, that's... That's possible. That's most likely. Uh, either way, where are we, um... Where are we going? Well, my secret base is no good, because it's my business. And they know about your house... And Esther's bar is burnt down. So. Um. I might. Know a guy. Uh, give me one second. Hey, David. Yeah? Can I call. Do I know a guy? Can, <laughs> can I call the Baldwin? 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You could call Alec. I, I call him. What happens? Okay. It rings for a little bit. Uh, it answers. Uh, hello? Uh, Bill? Uh, hey, Alec. How's it going? Hi, I see that you, uh, read my text message. I mean, you responded to it, of course. Uh, but, uh, have you found the other, uh... He whispers. Bacab. Not yet, uh, but... In order for that to happen... I might need to stay, um... At your place for a few days. Do you have, like, a pool house or, um... An underground bunker... I have a studio apartment uh, downtown. Uh, I do have a, I guess, a corner where you could stay. Uh, <laughs> but sure, I'll, uh, I'll lay out uh, a futon and a, a blanket for you. Uh, or is everything all right? Um, not exactly. Do you, do you have access to any abandoned warehouses or... Um... Uh, I'm afraid not. I do have a, uh, a storage unit that I rent out for my hot dog stand. But, uh, that's, uh, that's about it. You know, do you think you can meet me at the storage unit? Uh, sure. Uh, the storage unit's at, uh, 476 Cedarwood. All right. Um, let me put that into my phone and put driving directions. Wink, wink. I don't say wink, wink. Um. (laughs) All right, um, let me text when I'm closer. Alright, well, uh, I'm just a, uh, short step of the wind away. Wink. <laughs> he does say wink. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, awesome. Toodaloo, Rumi. And he hangs up. Oh, God. Alright, guys, I may have... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop laughing. I may have found us a place to stay. For now. Until we get our bearings. Uh, did I hear fut- futon over the phone? Uh, it actually is going to be less comfortable than that. <laughs> I'll have you know, um, as a robotic man or cybernetic man, I need a very comfy place to sleep. I have a very special mattress that I sleep on, and I will have to take the futon. Well, it will be better than a um, coffin or a jail cell. So, <laughs> we take what we get. All right. And I think uh, as the crew is soaring overhead of the city, uh, Bill leading you towards 470, 476 Cedarwood? Uh, there was four numbers. You're heading to the 400 block of Cedarwood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we catch up with Faye. Uh, where do we find Faye at? Um, so, Faye is limping down the street and finally can't take the pain anymore and ducks into an alleyway and crouches down and calls Woodard. Okay. Picks up. Uh, hi, Faye. Uh, is everything all right? No, Woodard, I... They found out. They know who I am. I've been shot multiple times. I... I'm, I'm not okay. Where are you? Um, I'm downtown. I'm in an alley. I'm, uh, I was walking away from City Hall. I maybe made it a block or two. You, you hear him shouting on the other end of the phone. Mohammed, the keys, let's go! Alright, we're, we're coming. Uh, we're, uh, landmarks, do you see any? Uh, there's, um, as you, like, see Faye, she's, like, her eyes are, like, closing and opening, and she's, like, holding her shoulder um, and arm where she was shot. Um, I think I'm behind a restaurant um, across from a coffee shop. Um, uh, I don't know. All right, we're coming, honey. Uh, just stay where you are. Uh, try to stomp the bleeding if you can. Uh, we're, we're coming. Okay. What, what, about, uh, what about the others, your friends? Uh, were they there? No, I, I don't know where they are. I don't know what happened. All right, just, just stay on the line with me. I'm, I'm on my way. Okay. Um, and Faye, like, there's trash bags and just like, 
clutter in this alley. And Faye just, like, leans on the trash bags, holding her shoulder and, like, trying to put pressure on it. Okay. And I think uh, we cut from that scene to the rest of the crew. Um, What are y'all doing? We're nearing the storage facility. Okay. And I guess you uh you shoot your text to Alec? Yep. Okay. Uh shoot your text to Alec. You get a text back on my way. Um fully spelled out and punctuated. Um and uh you arrive there and uh you kinda wait for a few seconds and you hear like a strong breeze that builds into a gust that builds into a whipping whirlwind and you look up above you and you see a man uh, with this just wind spiraling around him like a mini tornado with newspaper and refuse and uh, dead leaves like caught up and swirling around him his arms stretched out and you see him coming out of the sky and he lands in an alleyway kind of brushes himself off and uh, peeks his head down one street, peeks his head down the other and then walks out into the open um, this man is a uh, slightly built man with uh, dark hair um, he has tattoos on uh, his arms and kind of peeking out from his collarbone uh, the tattoos are very very similar to the ones Bill has uh, but he is just in a uh, a t-shirt and jeans, and he just kind of steps out into the alleyway, uh, looking down both ends of the street. Does he see us? Yeah, are we like close? He does not. Okay. He does not see y'all yet. Uh, I'm going to be like, all right, guys, <clears throat> just uh, stay here for a second. I'll be back. And I'm going to uh, put my collar up <laughs> 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 and uh, walk over to... Alec and then try to pull him into the alleyway to talk. Okay, I think uh, you get, like, right up next to him and he turns around, oh, hey, bit, and, like, before he can say your name, you, like, grab him and jerk him into the, uh, the alleyway. And he says, oh, hey, uh, what is, uh, going on? All right, so, uh, you can't really call me Bill anymore? Oh? What's your, what's your new name? Um, let's say Stanley Hudson. He he <laughs> nods confused. Okay. I'll I'll call you Stanley then, buddy. Alright, so you can call me Stanley. Um I have some friends. We are in trouble at the moment. We're hoping to work uh through it, right? Sure, and sure. We need you to um to let us just lay low in the in your storage unit. We'll get out of your hair, and then as soon as I get over this, I'll be able to help you out a lot more. Because I can't really show my face in public too much at the moment. Oh, uh, of course, buddy. Uh, whatever I can do to help, Stanley. Uh, and he, uh, like, <clears throat> goes over to the, the keypad to enter into, like, this fenced-off area. And there's, you know, camera and security. And, Bill, I guess you, like, kind of pull your cowboy hat down tighter, flip your collar up higher. Uh, but he walks in, and he walks past all these big, large, uh, you know, 7 foot by 15 foot uh, storage units, and they start to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and he leads you to one at the very end of the uh, the lane, and it's basically just like a house door that's metal, and he grabs it and <laughs> lifts it up, and uh, it is perfectly sized for his hot dog cart uh and there is not room for a whole lot else is the hot dog cart in there yep (laughs) he scratches the back of his head it's a very tight fit but uh it could be cozy i hope you're close with your friends um hey do you think you do you think you need to do any business at at the moment maybe you want to sell some dogs for a couple hours? Um, if I buy, like, ten or twenty? Well, uh, well, uh, sure, I could, uh, go out and do some business, uh, but then where would I keep my hot dog cart? Well, we just really need a place to not be seen for a 
while while we g gather our um bearings. I get you, I get you. Well, I'll go sell some hot dogs then, and I will be back uh before the sun sets. That seems very antiquated. I felt like I should we're both, you know, something strange and weird is happening here, and I just thought that... I, I don't know. Never mind. Uh, I'm just going to pat him on the shoulder. Be like, I got, I got you. He grabs uh, the hot dog cart and wheels it out. Uh, and he says, uh, well, just uh, text me when you need me. I have that uh, futon ready. And he pushes it down in a way. And uh, the crew, where you are sitting in the alleyway, you see this tattooed man wheel his hot dog cart out he like sets up the umbrella and fluffs it out and uh starts wheeling it down the street towards uh the business district what have y'all been doing during this time i feel like esther and javi are having an argument just because he's like we screwed up again like we're running out of places yeah i think he's he's definitely panicky He's, uh, you know, worrying about we, we, we can't, we, we're out of hideouts. We don't have anywhere else to go. He's spiraling, and Esther's like, yeah. "You have got to chill. What good? What good is it going to do for us to spiral? We're literally accomplishing nothing. We just, we have to. We, we have, have to think. A, look, we've got a place right now. Hobby's. I mean, your hobby. Yep. <laughs> Bill is. Bill is taking care of it. I. I my kid. <sighs> and he starts doing some some deep breathing. Uh, Rin, what about you? I'm looking kind of panicked and looking at the security cameras, and I'm going to go up to one of the wires or, like, boxes. Or, I mean, I guess one of the ele electrical boxes to see about turning off the cameras. Ooh, excellent. Is this uh, going to be a hacking thing or a mythos thing? Um, I think it's going to be more of a mythos thing because like with the hacking or like the data mining or like planning a virus I feel like most of that is tied in with the high tech laptop that I do not have okay okay uh, so what could you add um, I was thinking something along the lines of machine possession of like turning it off and everything is binary uh, yeah definitely go ahead I got a 10. Nice. So you uh, get two juice, uh, and you can pick any of those options underneath change the game. Um, prolong the effect and hide the effect. Well, first of all, you would have to... You have to create something to prolong oh, or to hide. Yeah. Uh, so I could say you could create a story tag of like a camera blackout, and then you can choose to uh, keep it going or shorten the amount of time you have, but during that time nobody could find y'all or see that the system was hacked into. Yeah, um, I'll do create a story tag and hide the effect. I think that's probably the best one. Okay. So you uh, you use your powers to hack into this uh, security system you uh, are able to scramble the feed and like maybe you create a um, like a, a loop of footage so that nobody would notice it but you can only do that for so long before somebody but well before it ends nobody will notice but before it ends okay so Rin does that uh Bill you walk out. So I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk out. And do I see uh, Rin? Oh yeah. I guess as you're coming out, you see Rin like taking his hand away from the electrical box, like little blue electrical lines coming off of his fingers. I'm gonna say, Hey Rin. All right. I was planning on uh, flying us over, so we don't have to worry about the cameras. Uh, where's Esther and Javi? You know, I was so focused on the cameras that I literally have no idea where they are. What do you mean, focus on the cameras? Well, now the cameras are turned off because they were on, but I turned them off for us so that even if we do fly over, as you suggested, or if we walked around, no one sees us because the last thing we need is more attention on us. All right. Well, that makes it easier. All right. So what did you say Esther was? I don't remember. She was arguing with Javi. 
And then I was like, man, this is a really boring conversation that I don't want to be a part of. And so I just went over and turned off the camera. So We literally didn't move from the spot that you left us. You turn around and <laughs> Esther and Javi are standing right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there you guys are. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, guys. All right, so um, we have a temporary solution. Um, it's kind of, it's a little small, but we can figure out kind of where we're going to go from here. Follow me. To the SUV. Okay, we transition to the three of you crammed into this uh, five foot tall, four foot long, two and a half feet wide storage unit. Wait, is it four of us or five of us? Or three of us? Three. Oh, yeah, it is four of you because Javi's there. All right, so I know this isn't ideal, but um, let's brainstorm. Where uh, where can we stay? Where can we hide out? Well, this is obviously not going to work because this looks real snug. Well, yeah, but in here, nobody sees our face. Nobody walks by, you know? Javi, uh, do you know any uh, abandoned buildings? Any... Um, <laughs> Old haunted police stations that nobody ever uses. Anything like that? Uh, yeah, we could, uh, uh, well, uh, Esther and I could look into, uh, some, some, uh, places downtown that have been abandoned for, uh, quite a while. Uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, we could, we could look into it. All right. Aw- awesome. Um, all right, Javi, I think that's a great idea. Uh, maybe me and, uh, Rin can look into I don't even know, like, look into some for sale or vacant lots. So maybe we could just fly and, and look for stuff and um, touch base with each other, see what we could come up with. As long as we're both flying, I feel like I feel like we could be uh, safe, at least for a little while. Uh, sure, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, Esther, uh, what about your, well, I guess all of you, uh, what about your, uh, your flower crown friend? Does, uh, does she have anywhere? Uh, I mean, there's Woodard, I guess. I don't know how big their place is. Ooh, what about the water treatment plant? Didn't it blow up? Isn't that in rubble? Oh yeah, 23? Oh yeah. It is a vacant lot, though. We got found there, though, already. (laughs) We got it found. Is there is there anywhere that you've been that you haven't been found yet? <laughs> right here. <laughs> uh, Javi leans against the uh, metal siding of the wall and starts doing deep breathing. Uh, Esther's gonna hop on the comms and see if Faye responds. Okay, we transition back to Faye. Uh, I think before we see Faye, we see like a black trash bag full of refuse and old discarded food and we see like a banana peels yes exactly that is what i was thinking just banana it's just a this is just a banana themed restaurant uh but we see like uh blood pooling in the folds of the uh black plastic of the trash bags and then it with banana peels and then it pans up to see faye still clutching her shoulder uh faye a while has passed uh what's happening with you how does faye look um, Faye doesn't look great. Yeah. Um, so she was shot, and I had said shoulder, but I'm pretty sure in the last episode, shoulder meaning like right above the heart was where she got shot. Um, and so thus all the blood. Um, she can't walk. She's really confused. Um, and is really upset because she f- failed. And she wasn't able to get what she needed, and she wasn't able to protect the people she needed to protect. Um, So she's kind of wallowing in self-pity right now. It's not a great moment for her. Um, Has Woodard arrived? Not yet. He has... David, I swear to God, if you kill Woodard... (laughs) Why would I... He's... What? (laughs) If anyone, I would kill you! (laughs) He's fine! We we threaten Uh, David so much. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love making this podcast with my friends <laughs> and my wife and having them just shit on me <laughs> for my bad voices. 
<laughs> and killing characters. I wasn't shitting good. on you for a bad no. voice. Your voice know, was fine. You were yes. doing a different character's voice. I am also wallowing in self pity. Yeah, but anyways, you got a little triggered. It's okay. um, I, he's been on the phone with you this whole time. Okay. And he's like, "Do you see uh, the 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 dog park? Is is are you across from the dog park?" Um. I'm on the phone with you. I'm so stupid. She opens up her phone and sends her current location. Oh, God, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, uh, Mohammed, drive here. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Faye can feel somewhere that Esther is rolling her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Faye feels that every minute of the day. Okay. All right, we're on the way, Faye. How, how are you, honey? Are you? What's... How are you feeling? I mean, I think I'm going to live. Esther would be rolling her eyes. Because I'm probably being overdramatic. There's just a lot of blood. And so I just kind of keep going in and out of consciousness. God, but once what? we get the the shot, the hole, the bullet hole. Faye, focus. Focus, um, honey. Here? What? Uh-huh. What happened? Um. Tell me what happened. Uh, yes. Um, I, Deacon. Uh, do you know Deacon? Yes, Deacon Smith. Okay. Deacon saw me, he recognized me, and he decided to tell Cooper Wheatley. Who? What? Who? Uh, Cooper Wheatley. God. And you hear him. He's like covering up the phone. Cooper Wheatley. You hear Mohammed. Oh, crap. Wait. Do you know Cooper Wheatley is not... What? Yes, uh, we've, uh, we've had some run-ins with him in the past... Uh, he used to work on the police force, uh, but then, well, uh, Muhammad and I, very early on in our careers, kind of busted him for uh, police brutality and some different things like that, uh, laundering money, you know, different things. Uh, so he was kicked off the police force, and then we continued to run into him. Uh, he ran security for a couple of different uh, mafia-owned businesses, uh, but... Uh, yeah, he had kind of fallen off our radar. Oh, hell, I... If I'd known he was at City Hall, honey, I would, I would never let you go there. He is dangerous. You hear Muhammad in the background. I have the scars to prove it. <sighs> Think I'm going to be joining you on those scars, Muhammad. What did... Um, can we revisit the part where you know that I'm trying with the crew to take down the mafia in the city and you fail to mention that Cooper Wheatley was a big concern. Faye, I... Cooper Wheatley was my problem. I had no idea that he was at City Hall. He, he shouldn't have been your problem. Well, honey, I hate to break it to you, but we're married now, so we share problems. <laughs> you hear Muhammad in the background. She's right there, buddy. Oh, Muhammad, drive, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Is it... Are you, are you, like, full-on arguing while bleeding out in the backseat of a car right now? I am in an alley. <laughs> You're still in the yeah. Alley? yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. it was a really it was a it was a rough time. Okay. <laughs> Faye doesn't usually get roughed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's not coping well. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh, and I think at this moment, uh, how do y'all can how does your communicators work? Do they run through your phones? Are they like a Bluetooth connect to your phones, or are they just a like a communication device that you wear as a headset in your ear. I pictured it more like an X-Men communicator kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Like a separate channel. That's how we've been treating it at least. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. That's that's cool. Uh, would Faye have her comlink in or is she focused on talking to Wooder? No, I think definitely Faye would because of everything that was going on with Pip Hamill and because she was going to City Hall to see if Pip Hamill was still there. And she talked to them Yes, while she was in the uh, uh, the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got it. Okay. So I think uh, you hear your calm turn on, and Esther. Uh, Faye, where are you at? Um, Esther, are y'all okay? Uh, I mean, ish. Are you talking to Esther? Is she is she on the phone? Yeah, Esther's on the comms. Um, I throw. Wait, who are you talking to? Oh, for the love! And she <laughs> presses the speaker button on the phone. <laughs> Um, Wooded, Muhammad, Esther, they're all there. Esther, who who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Faye? 
<laughs> yeah, that kind of sounds like Faye. Did you did you get a hold of her? Where where is she? Does she have a hideout? Where's Marvin? <laughs> I just want to know where Water is. Faye, Faye, where are you at? <laughs> There's literally only four of us allowed on this channel. Of course it's Faye. Who else would it be? Um, I am okay. I've been shot a couple times. Um, I've, the, Cooper Wheatley is not who we think he is. And he scraped my ankle very badly. I mean, that sounds very... Pathetic. Okay, but where are you right now? I'm in an alley, bleeding out. I mean, not bleeding out. There's just a lot of blood running down a trash bag that I'm leaning on. Wait, you've been shot? I said that 30 seconds ago, and I don't really have a lot of energy right now. But that's Esther's job. You never get shot. I know, and I didn't even get shot as bad as Esther usually does. So if you have any tips, that'd be cool. Uh, my tip would be that you not be in an alley right now. Do you have a hiding place that we can use? Yes, the whole cottage in the forest. Cool, so can we get some directions and meet up there? Sure, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. <laughs> well, I mean, didn't Woodard say he was on his way to you? Yeah, I just thought maybe you could get up there faster. <laughs> No. I am, but we have to get through this moment. Okay. If I start freaking out, it's going to freak you out. Cool. That's... <laughs> if I start freaking out, it's going to freak you out. I'm acting like my normal self to keep you being normal. Yeah, okay. You make good points. Um, I feel loved. Um, oh, <laughs> um Yes. Uh, message Woodard and have him send you the coordinates. And I think at that moment, uh, the beat-up Pinto pulls up, and uh, the door kicks open, and Woodard sprints to you. Oh, God, Faye. Oh, God. Uh, he takes his like uh, jacket sleeve and just tears it off and starts wrapping it around your shot shoulder. Can you walk? Um, I can limp. All right, I got you. And he scoops you up in his arms, carries you to the, the car door. Uh, Muhammad like reaches back to the back seat, pushes the door open, and uh, Woodard gets in to the back seat with you. Um, Woodard texts uh, the address or where the cottage is. No, I change that. He doesn't text. Um, as he's picking me up, they need the coordinates. Um, what what are they? And I say it over comms. Hello friends, and welcome to episode 66 of Mist Conceptions. I am your host, David White. I hope you're all having a good time listening to this episode, and I hope you're having a good time when you're not listening to this episode. I just hope you're having a good time. Speaking of good times, last night I got together with some folks on Roll20 and played through the first session of Son of Oak's new starter set, for City of Mist. We played through the new case, Shark Tank. Well, we didn't play through it. We uh, just played a little bit of it, but uh, we have much more of that case to discover. And, you know, playing with strangers is always uh, super, super stressful for me because I never know if this is going to be a good group or a bad group. And the games I play that turn out to be bad groups really, really suck. Uh, but last night, uh, it was not sucky. It was very, very fun. Uh, I am so happy that uh, I nabbed this group of role players to uh, to participate in my um, my starter set game. Uh, it was lots of fun. So Kurt, Jacob, Kevin, Phil, Josh, uh, thank you so much for joining in last night. I look forward to our next game. Uh, and uh, yeah. 
it, it was it was lots of fun. And you know, if you are having trepidations about playing uh, with people online, um, you know that that's valid. You know, playing online isn't isn't always easy, but uh, I hope that you brave it, and I hope that you are rewarded for your bravery uh, by finding a group that respects boundaries and uh, shares, uh, you know, what is meaningful consent and shares the spotlight. Um, and, you know, I hope you have a, if you decide to play virtually during this time of social distancing, I hope that you get a good group to play with. And I'll go ahead and say, if you're looking for somewhere to find groups to play with, as I said, Son of Oak is currently doing this thing on Roll20 where they are inviting MCs to run their new starter set, Shark Tank, for players for free. Uh, So, if you are interested in getting in on that, unfortunately, I don't have any open spots with uh, my session, but who knows, maybe I'll open it back up and run it in the future once this run-through is done. Um, But if you would like to uh, go to Son of Oak's social media, to their Discord, uh, hopefully you could find a group that way, and hopefully that'll be the right group for you. Allow me to give a Happy Mother's Day shout-out. To my dear wife, Carrie. Carrie, thank you so much for uh, supporting our son, supporting me, uh, caring for both of us, and, you know, finding time to uh, be awesome at your job. Uh, You are an amazing woman, and uh, I love you for it. Thank you, Carrie. And I also want to give a happy Mother's Day shout out to all the mothers who listen to Missed Conceptions, whether you be a baby mommy or a doggy mommy or a kitty mommy or whatever. Uh, thank you for listening. And I hope that yesterday was a very fulfilling and relaxing day for you. As you know, we are trying to get to $400 a month on our Patreon. Once we hit that mark, I will be able to pay the performers of Misconceptions and Sins of the Father, our sister podcast, uh, about $5 per episode. It is not a lot, but it is a step in the right direction and a direction that I really want this podcast network to move in. Uh, We are less than $50 away from hitting that $400 a month goal. If you can give uh, any amount, $1, $2, $5, $10, any amount would be very appreciated uh, in helping us reach that goal. And we are still running our little promotion. I have five posters sitting here right next to me that are waiting for people to pledge, uh, or if you are already a current patron, to up your pledge to the next level, and you will be entered into a drawing to receive one of these Misconceptions posters, one of the last ones we ever had printed. So if you would like one of these Misconceptions posters, please go support us on our Patreon, or if you already are a supporter, just up your pledge to the next level. And you know, our patrons get access to some pretty cool stuff, especially at the $5 and up level. They get access to our uncut audio from Misconceptions and from Sins of the Father, but they also get access to their very own show called SideQuest. And in SideQuest, we have a rotation of GMs and players playing a rotation of different games. And the game that we are currently featuring on our side quest is Marvel Heroic Roleplaying, a uh, sadly retired production from Margaret Weiss Productions. I wanted to give you a little preview clip from that side quest series. Enjoy. We're playing a comic book game. Describe for me what awesome badass woman power scene do we get in this panel as the three of you stand over this smoldering a sentinel in front of Shelby. Kitty is like reaching out and Lockheed's like climbing back up and she's just like blowing him off like. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Rose going to give a one-liner. If I had a dog as ugly as him, I'd shave his butt and make him walk backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Storm stands there with Shelby well, I hope the boys are doing half as good as we are, because that didn't take us any time at all. Way to go, girls. 
Okay. And Shelby looks at the three of you, and we just see like a little diminutive text bubble next to her mouth. If you would like to hear the rest of Storm and Kitty Pride and Rogue's story, I hope that you will go and pledge $5 a month to our Patreon. It'll be put towards a good cause, and you'll get a little bit of cool stuff out of it. And while I'm talking about Patreon, I am full of chagrin, and I need to make a correction. I need to make a correction, because the last Patreon shoutout I did, I shouted out Matthew Peterson. I'm sure Matthew Peterson exists, and somewhere, wherever they are, they are an awesome person. But Matthew Peterson is not a patron. Rather, Matthew Patterson is a patron. So, Matthew, I am very, very sorry. You do not have to change your name. Uh, you know, you can continue to be Mr. Patterson, uh, unless you want to change your name. Uh, I mean, that's cool. Uh, I have some ideas that I could give you, uh, and I hear that Elon Musk is uh, also very creative with coming up with names. Um, But anyways, let's get back to this episode. Uh, And I think we transition from that scene to everyone at the cottage um uh Faye describe this cottage for us I think this is the first time uh, everybody's been there um okay tucked behind lots of trees um it there's just a ton of greenery surrounding it there is a hammock in between a couple trees like a few feet from the cottage there's a front porch with chairs and then it's just like covered in like vines around the front and plants um like potted plants and plants in the ground in front of the house um and then you go inside um but it's a three bedroom house and it's like your goldilocks and the three bears cottage like There's a fireplace in the living room that's like a stone fireplace, and it's very cozy and warm. Um, And then, like, where you walk in is the main living room, and then there's, like, a kitchen off to the side and then bedrooms. It's very clearly a place that Woodard and Faye have been, like, setting up as newlyweds. Like, there's, like, Woodard and Faye. Woodard and Faye. Woodard and Faye. Like, everywhere. Um, uh huh. Esther's rolling her eyes. <laughs> uh, uh, we pick up in that scene of being in the cottage. Um, what's going on? I think Woodard has Faye laid out on a couch, and I think he has, like, some sewing needle and thread and uh, and medicine and stuff, and he's kind of working with your your gunshot and also looking at your arm that also has the mm-hmm. the huge uh bullet rivet down the bicep mm-hmm. um what what do y'all do i found this stuff in the kitchen to make the tea that she likes Faye has like <laughs> tears coming to her eyes as esther brings her <laughs> the tea <laughs> esther says get over it and hands her the tea I think as your as tears are like welling up in your eyes, Woodard looks up. Oh, am I am I hooting? No. Completely oblivious to like what women emotions are. <laughs> what women emotions? No, no, dear. It's just Esther is a she's just great. I wish Esther <laughs> like <laughs> she goes over to the wall. And she takes down one of the Faye and Woodard signs <laughs> <laughs> to make up for being nice. Okay, yeah. Sure. Uh, Faye shrugs. Yeah, that, that's about right. <laughs> uh. Ren is making himself up some tea. Bill is asking Ren to make him a cup as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll uh, make some black tea, like your soul. But uh, I'll take it. I mean, <laughs> I guess can't be Jesus. Yeah, he doesn't have a problem with it. 
All right, as you all get your tea and I get stitched up here, um, can y'all kind of let me know what happened? Where y'all have been? I all The last time that I connected with y'all was when I said I was worried that people could find you. And then I heard all of this screaming and shouting and nothing. Yeah, people found us. We were at a a party of sorts. Yeah, it was kind of like a surprise party, except for we didn't like the surprise. And they were shooting at us, and um, they were taking the beastmen, and uh, we barely escaped with our lives. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, beastmen, uh, what do you uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, um. Did Faye ever tell you about Nick? Uh, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, he was there. Oh. Uh, what? I thought he was... He he was lost. Nick was there? Yeah. He doesn't know us anymore. I shot his leg. Oh. <laughs> he didn't know us before I shot his leg. I didn't shoot his leg and then he forgot us. <laughs> Just to clarify. Is he Okay. I mean, all I did was shoot him in the leg. I'm totally fine. <laughs> okay. I should have been there, but what happened? Yes, y'all got shot at. You almost escaped with your lives. Can you please expand? Because why was Nick there? I don't know. There was groups of military men, and there was beast men, and they were coming out from everywhere, and... Their portals? We left. Yeah, Jimmy the Butcher was there. Bill killed Jesse. What? I mean, just like normal stuff. What? Please imagine that as y'all are telling this, this is very much the Frozen 2 scene where Olaf is recounting Frozen (laughs) 1 and the lieutenant is like, what? What? This is (laughs) Faye's level of surprise. I'm so glad I saw that movie last week. (laughs) <laughs> thank you disney plus <laughs> yes okay wait jimmy the butcher was there oh yeah and he looked so gross i mean he was like all just dis- dismorphed and really disgusting looking i mean not i mean usually he is pretty disgusting looking anyways but like man looks like he hasn't taken a shower in like a week it's like they had morphed more into being an animal. Yeah, well, whoever's doing all the Beastmen stuff, they are doing it to uh, seemingly all of our enemies, and um, it makes them a lot stronger. Who else was there? Those are the only ones that we recognized. Although Jesse's dead. Yeah, and Ren mentioned that Jesse is dead. Oh, well, it's a, uh, Faye stops herself from speaking. I was going to say it's about time, um, but that seems very mean. But it's about time. No, if she's, uh, if she's anything like what I've heard, uh, it was, it was about time. <laughs> uh, Bill, did you get the satisfaction of being the one? It was satisfying. And after you say that, Bill, the image of her head caved in, her vacant eyes looking at you, uh, flashes in your head for just a second. And then you come back to this moment. Uh, I'm going to use the restroom. Where's that? Oh, it's uh, it's down the hall right past the, uh, the Akaya plant. Yeah, okay, thanks. Bill's being distant. He's being the distant when something bad really happens and he doesn't want to show us his emotions. Well, I mean, it was really bad. He killed something that was connected to his past. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, he used a baseball bat and her head was super caved in and gross. So. No. What about his community on the island? The other Oh yeah, all the animal- beast men didn't have been look taken. good. He lost everything. Again. Uh, do we do we cut from that scene to get a little 
vignette of what Bill is doing in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, so what do we see? Bill is uh, looking in the mirror. It's super cliche, but I don't care. Looking in the mirror, rinsing his face off with cold water, and um, kind of slapping himself a little bit. And be, and it's like he's just kind of whispering, like she had to go. She had to go. She was, she was gonna kill you. She was a bad person. It's okay. It's okay. And then just like breathing, trying to self-regulate. And then uh, I dry my face off. And I go back outside and I say, hey, where's that tea? I've uh, got it for you right here. Dark as your soul. Just like how, just how you like it. <laughs> Good one. So, um, what is the plan going forward then? You said something when they mentioned the beasts, beast men, that clicked for you. Do you oh, know I something just... else besides, you know, everything that you've kept from me in this whole investigation? Oh, all right, oh, honey. I think you are under some duress and you're taking it out on me, which is quite frankly unwarranted. But, uh, no, I was just saying that I did not know that you were living with beast men. Esther's going to be, like, backing out of the room and signaling for the guys to back out with her. <laughs> no, don't leave. Yes, don't leave. Stay in here. <laughs> we're not arguing. We we're all just, just, like, pause in place. <laughs> and we're like... I'm going to slap Ren. Why? <laughs> Why are you slapping me? I'm going to slap Ren, like, not really hard, and I'm be like, don't you ever talk to me that way again. <laughs> and then I'm going to slap Bill. <laughs> Okay, so we have a little Three Stooges routine going on in the corner. How could you, Bill? I'm sorry, you just drive me crazy sometimes. We're fine, we're fine. What I just failed to mention, because he wasn't aware, not because he was intentionally hiding anything from me. Okay, good, good. That good. Cooper Wheatley is... Uh, he can be things. Yes, I would. I would never hide things from you. I know, I know. I've just been shot. Okay, do I get a shot pass? Just got shot pass. Sure, honey, I'll give you a that, shot pass. That's not a. That's not. Yes, but she doesn't need to know. It's not a mechanic. <laughs> that's the game. <laughs> Sorry. Do we ever give Esther just a shot pass? I don't think so. Should we maybe um? Take some time to. Seems like it's really tense. Um, if if we're if we're if we're pretty safe here, could we kind of rest, um, figure out what we're gonna need, and then come back and when we're in a better state, even if it's just a few hours, uh, talk plan. Of course, uh, we could we could do that. Uh, Muhammad's out. Uh, Stalking in the woods, making sure we're not being followed. Um, uh, sure, we have... I mean, there's not much here. Uh, but you're free to use any of the facilities. Oh, good, because I'm starving. And Ren goes straight for the pantry. Ren, limit how much you eat, please. Yes, we... Only we can only make so many grocery trips as one of us is highly wanted. Ooh, lovers, chocolate covered strawberries. I'll take some of those. I was oh okay, that's <laughs> fine. They were Mohammeds anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what time of day is it? Um, it's afternoon because the. Confrontations happen in the morning. Uh, getting there, get, fleeing the island, uh, getting here, I think took, uh, you know, a couple of hours. So it's in the afternoon. Okay. Um. Everybody, feel free to make yourselves come to come some lamina. Com comfortable. <laughs> Is Javi here too? I assume so. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um. Everybody, feel free to make yourselves comfortable. We have a couple air mattresses in the back closet. Um couch feel free to rest 
wherever, just not my room. Um, Esther immediately goes to her face room and takes a nap on the bed. <laughs> I was just kidding. You can cut that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> can I say at this point, like, Muhammad comes in? And so what I'm wanting to do is, like, me, Muhammad, and Woodard have a, like, routine of, like, once everybody is in and settled, we, like, all do our safety checks and, like, do this thing. Can I run that scene? Sure, sure. So, uh, at this point, I think Muhammad pokes his head in and he's like, are we ready to do our safety check? Uh, yeah. Woodard, will you take me outside? Yeah, come on. Uh, he puts an arm underneath you and helps you limp towards the door. Muhammad, you checked the surrounding area? Of course, always. Okay, great. Um, Woodard, check the house, and I will start working on the forest. And you see, like, the trees get thicker, and um, vines kind of cover up Mm -hmm. the house more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, It's very, like... It makes it look as if the house is abandoned, like all of the weeds Ooh, grow nice. up in front of the cottage. Um, and then if anyone was flying overhead, like mm-hmm, the trees are mm-hmm. too thick to see Ooh, that really there like is that. any cottage yeah, there. I really like that. That's good. Yeah, and, and Woodard starts casing the, the house and yeah. doing his check and stuff. Um, and then when Woodard comes back around, we all look up, check, and make sure everything looks good. Yes, uh, everything was good on my end. Yeah, uh, the force is pretty quiet. Okay. Um, and Faye puts up... She just puts up extra vines there, almost like a gate. And then... Alright, let's go in. And they go back inside. Okay. Uh, and what did the three of you do uh, while that was going on? Because I would assume that takes... Yeah, that At that least 30 minutes. Yeah. 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 He drew straws for who would get the bedroom. <laughs> if you'd like, Bill, you can snuggle up on the bed with me as well. All right. But I don't move. Like, I say all right, but I'm just kind of sitting there. Mm-hmm. Mohammed, Faye, and Woodard come back in. Um, Can we do a montage? Let's do a montage. Let's go around the table. What is everybody doing? I would like to recover from my last activity. Okay. And I think that is appropriate because Woodard was helping you. Yeah. Uh, so what was your injured at? Um, so I have multiple. Um, I have a slashed shot three, a crippled ankle two, and a dazed one. Okay. Dazed one is gone. Great. That's kind of what I figured. Uh, I would say crippled is gone as well. Uh, and then, uh, with Woodard's, uh, medicine and stitching, uh, I think you step it down by one. Cool. Faye's a functioning human again. What about the rest of you? Uh, I would like to do a photo montage, uh, to recover my flesh wound. Cause I don't think in this setting that I, I mean... It would feel like cheating to say that I would recover high-tech laptop by pulling out laptop pieces from my backpack. Or yeah, that's fair. Uh, and I think that would, that would feel. Uh, like you just had a you just had a flesh wound one, right? Yeah. Okay, then I think you you step that down completely. You eat some uh, some Oreos. You uh, take some time to drink some tea, and uh, you start feeling much better. I'd like to continue my conversation with Avi about. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what was the lady? Lena. Name? Lena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So, um. Like Javi and I are like getting settled, mm-hmm. and I feel like he is like, okay, now that we have a minute, like. Sure. Sure. So, so me in- yeah. initiate it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey kid. Uh, now that we uh have some time, uh. Why don't you step outside with me real quick? Okay. Step outside. There's chirping nature all around. Very serene. Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. Uh, all right, kid. Uh, what, are, what are we doing? What do, you, what do you mean, what are we doing? I mean, what's the, what's the plan? I mean, this is the hideout right now. We don't... 
I don't know what the plan is right at the moment. Okay. Um, you know, kind of last time we talked, I was asking questions about, uh, Lena. Uh, what else, what else do you know about her? I mean, I, I know that she's alive. Uh, there was something about her in the library. Yeah, you said, uh, you said she works there at, a uh, what was it? It was on the, the branch on Rook and Bishop Street. Can you tell me anything else about her, though? Uh, so what, so before I keep going, what are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to, um, are you wanting to explore your mythos or work the case? It's one of those, but I can't really figure out which it would be. Okay. Uh, we could do an explore your mythos. Well, what, uh, you could definitely look into, uh, your mythos of why did he give this to me? Mm. Okay, so you're going to explore your mythos. What that will do is it you will gain one clue with a method and source based on your description, which is, you know, talking to Javi. Mm. And you will also get an attention to your owl ring. Um, so, uh, you have you have a clue. Uh, what, uh, what question do you want to ask for that clue? Uh, why does she... Her, how did the ring get taken away from her? Uh, you know what, I, I really, I really don't know. I, gosh, I guess so much, so much of my relationship with her is really, it's really spotty. Uh, but I, I, I remember her having a ring. I guess it was the owl ring. I don't, I don't know when we were all running around together. But, uh, uh, I don't know, I, she had it at one point, and then, uh, when she, you know, kind of left the group, uh, she still had it, at least to my knowledge, uh, yeah, sorry kid, I can't, I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering her, specifically. But she left the group? Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's why your dad and I uh, didn't really talk about it much. Do you think we need to reach out to her? Do you think she's in danger? Um, I, I mean, maybe. It's up to you, kid. I guess I'll think about it. And then I guess Bill, you're the the last person for this montage. Um, yeah. So the only thing I could really think to do right now would be recover my hurt one status. Okay. Mm. So how do you do that? I mean, I would say, or I would assume, since it's a hurt one, it's not going to require like a lot of attention. Maybe yeah. just the fact that we're getting to rest, I'm getting to drink tea, sitting down, and like resting could be enough or do you think that is wrong no i agree i think uh i think that works because cool. i think rin rin did the same thing with his uh flesh wound one status yeah i just yeah. ate some oreos and drank some tea and my flesh wound went away boom yeah definitely all right so you all you all kind of take your moments uh you come back together in the the cottage um Okay, so I know a lot has happened, um, but here's the thing. This is the biggest group we've ever had together in one room with an insane amount of knowledge between all of us. I feel like we should utilize this whole group. To get to the bottom of things? Yeah. Yeah, because it sounds like Woodard knows a lot more information than about Wheatley than we know. Well, Woodard and Muhammad have worked their own side of the Mafia for quite some time. Harvey has his own experience on the inside. I have my experience with Leslie and everything that happened with Cooper Wheatley. Y'all have the experience from the island, plus everything we've all done together. Yes, I... I agree. I think it would be a 
good idea to all get on the, the same page. Uh, from the kitchen, you hear a ding, and you see Muhammad walk in holding a baking sheet with mittens and a little flower apron on. Uh, that is usually for Faye, so it's very small on him. And he says, Well, I guess if we're all going to be here together, we may as well eat some of my spinach puffs. <laughs> End of episode. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a perfect timing. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Misconceptions. We'll be back with our next episode on May 25th. If you have a Facebook or Twitter, you can find us on both of those social media accounts. Why don't you go give us a like, give us a follow, and I don't know if poking is still a thing, but if you poke us, we'll poke you back. We also have an email, mistconceptionspod at gmail.com, if you would like to reach us that way. This show is wholly supported by the generous monthly donations of our patrons on Patreon. If you would like to join that elite club of listeners, you can click the link below. And remember, we are still trying to get to $400 a month, so any amount you give would be very helpful. City of Mist is an RPG created by Sun of Oak. You can find more of their products at sunofoak.com. The Misconceptions theme music was composed by Aaron Wharton. You can listen to more of his music at aaronwharton.net. And that's it for this week's episode of Misconceptions. Stay safe, have fun, and keep it nerdy, y'all.